Howdy and welcome back to part two of our three-part series. In the last episode, we learned how the HTTP request response protocol works with routes, controllers, actions, and models to deliver a RESTful JSON CRUD API. In this episode, we'll take the concepts we learned and use them to build the API from scratch. In the final episode, we'll explore how sales blueprints, actions, and routes can be used to create that same RESTful JSON CRUD API automatically for any of your controllers and models. Let's review what we're trying to accomplish. Our API will be used to access and update information that tracks our sleep patterns, including how much we sleep each night and the quality of that sleep. So we want the API to be able to respond to requests to find, create, update, or delete instances of our sleep model. We'll create actions that correspond to the request and then build up routes that match the appropriate HTTP verbs and paths with the corresponding controller and action. So the find request will use the HTTP verb get with the path slash sleep colon ID and bind to the sleep controller and the find action. The create request will use the verb post with the path slash sleep and bind to the sleep controller and the create action. The update request will use the verb put with the path slash sleep colon ID and bind to the sleep controller and the update action. And finally, the delete request will use the verb delete with the path slash sleep and bind to the sleep controller and the destroy action. The actions will then use the model methods to find, create, update, or destroy the model as requested and use the parameters hours slept and sleep quality to pass any necessary information within the request through the action to the model. The action will then respond with the request status as well as any model instance or instances required. So let's get started. I'm going to bring up a terminal window and we're going to create a new sales project called MySleep using sales new MySleep with the linker flag here. And I'll change into the MySleep folder and generate a sleep controller and model using sales generate sleep. So here's a roadmap of what we're going to build. I'm going to go through each action, create it, and then build the matching route that will bind our request to the controller and action. So let's start with the create action. Okay, now let's bring up Sublime here. So let's open the sleep controller found in slash API controller slash sleep controller.js and create my first action called create. The action straightforward. We're going to grab the request parameters in the var params and then pass params into the create method of our sleep model. If there's an error, we'll return it. And if not, I'll send a 201 status code response with the newly created model instance formatted as JSON. So that's the create action. Now I need to create a route that will bind this controller in action to our request. So let's open the routes file in slash config slash routes.js and I'll add my route after the existing home route. The route consists of the verb post to the path slash sleep which is bound to the sleep controller and the create action. So let's make sure our create action is working. I'll go into the terminal, start sales with sales lift, I'll again be using the Postman Chrome extension to test our request. We'll be using the HTTP verb post to the path slash sleep, adding two parameters, hours slept and sleep quality. So when I click send, sales returns my newly created record as JSON. So let's take a look at our API roadmap. We've built the create action as the first of the four actions of our API. Next, we'll build the find action, and then we'll build a route that will bind the sleep controller and find action to our request. For the action, let's go back into the sleepcontroller.js file and look at the find action code. Let's also take a look at the route that will bind our request to the sleep controller and find action in slash config slash routes.js. The route points to our find action, but look at the end of the path. What's up with the colon ID and the question mark? The question mark makes the ID parameter optional. That way we capture both the request get slash sleep as well as get slash sleep slash ID. 
The find action will be our most complex action of the four in our API. This is because we have to provide for a request finding a single instance of the model, multiple instances of the model, as well as using criteria and options to narrow and or limit the scope of the find request. So within our find action, we'll attempt to assign a parameter called ID to the var ID. The next line of code looks to see if the ID is a shortcut, and I'm going to skip over this part because shortcuts are part of sales blueprints, which we're going to discuss in the last episode of this series. So if the ID exists, we're going to assume that the request is looking for a particular model instance. We'll pass the ID to the find one model method, and if we don't get back an instance of sleep in the callback, we'll return or respond with the status code of 404, not found. On success, we'll return and respond with the model instance formatted as JSON. Now, if no ID is provided, we'll start looking for other criteria or options that may have been passed as a parameter for finding one or more model instances. Criteria is placed in a WHERE clause, which is just the key name for a criteria object. For example, if you want to find all model instances where sleep quality is equal to good, your parameters would look like this. We'll also check for options that further limit the result in some way. For example, let's say we only want the first five model instances of our result. The parameters would look like this. So if where exists as a parameter and the value for it is a string, we'll just parse it as JSON and assign it to the var where. Even if where doesn't exist, we'll still look for the keys limit, skip, and sort and place them within the options object. Finally, we'll pass the options object to the find model method, and if we don't get back an instance of sleep in the callback, we'll return or respond with the status code of 404 not found. On success, we'll return and respond with the model instance or instances formatted as JSON. So we have the find action complete. Let's make sure all this works. I'll head back to the terminal and restart the sales server using sales lift and then open a browser with the Postman Chrome extension. So let's take a look by sending a get request to the path slash sleep. And after sending the request, the API returned five instances of the model. Since we didn't provide an ID or any criteria or options, the API used the find model method and returned all instances of the model formatted as JSON. Next, let's make a get request to the path slash sleep slash two. After pressing send, the API returns a single instance of the model with an ID of two. Now let's try a request with some criteria. We'll look for any model instances with an ID greater than one. And after making the request, the API returns four of the five model instances with IDs greater than one. Finally, I'm going to combine the criteria with some options. I'm going to make a get request to the path slash sleep for model instances with an ID not equal to four, limited to three model instances, and in descending order. So after making the request, the API returns three instances of the model in descending order. Now that we know our find action is battle tested, let's go back to our API roadmap. By building the create action in route and the find action in route, we're halfway through our API. Next, we'll build the update action, and then we'll build a route that will bind the sleep controller and update action to our request. So let's head back into the sleepcontroller.js file and look at the update action code. The update action consists of finding the ID of the model instance to update, coupled with the criteria that will be updated. If there's no ID as a parameter, we'll respond with a 400 status, no ID provided. Next, we attempt to update the model instance using the ID and the criteria provided. If there's an error, we'll return it, and if not, respond with the updated model instance formatted as JSON. So now that we have the update action complete, we'll bind that action to the request forming a new update route. The route points to our update action and uses the same ID question mark pattern that we used in the find route. Let's make sure all of this works. I'll restart the sales server using sales lift 
and then open a browser with the Postman Chrome extension. I'm going to first make a put request to the path slash sleep slash three with the parameters added underscore a trib equals 12. After making the request, the API returns our instance of the model that has an ID of three with our added attribute formatted as JSON. Next, I'll make a put request to the path slash sleep slash three, but instead of using query parameters, I'll pass the update via the request body. After making the request, the API returns our instance of the model that has an ID of three with our added three attribute formatted as JSON. Now that the update action in route is complete, it's time to build the last action of our API, the destroy action, and then bind it to our request to form the delete route. Let's head back into the sleepcontroller.js file and look at the destroy action code. So we'll attempt to assign the ID param to the var called ID. If it doesn't exist, I'll return a 400 status, no ID provided. If an ID parameter was provided in the request, I'll attempt to find it in the sleep model. If the model instance doesn't exist, I'll respond with a status code of 404, not found. If the model instance does exist, I'll pass its ID to the destroy method of the model, returning either an error, if any, or the deleted model instance formatted as JSON. Next, I'll bind the destroy action with the request in its own delete route. Let's check it out by restarting the sales server using sales lift. Once again, within the Postman Chrome extension, I'll make a delete request to the path slash sleep slash five. After sending the request, the API responds with the model instance it just deleted, formatted as JSON. Okay, congratulations, you've built a RESTful JSON CRUD API from scratch. Any client-side device that supports HTTP requests can now hit our API's endpoints and request and submit information about our sleep model. In the next and final episode of this series, I'll show you how sales, blueprints, actions, and routes can be used to create the same RESTful JSON CRUD API we just created, but this time automatically for any of your controllers and models. Okay, that was a lengthy one. As always, thanks for watching. And if you get a chance, follow me on Twitter, at Earl Nathan.